You're watching T.C. McCarthy, the most handsome and entertaining science fiction author on video, and today we're going to talk about space mining, which actually plays a minor role in my book Tiger Burning. Pre-order it now, it'll be coming out in July of 2019, but the video here, pew, explains why I need you to pre-order it. Now, space mining. I'm a geologist, so this is kind of right up my alley, something I'm really keen about and interested in. And one of the first things that people kind of think about when they think of, oh, precious metals, you know, things we need so badly that aren't abundant on Earth, we can just get them from space. Why not send craft, manned or unmanned, to start chipping away at these asteroids and bringing us back some platinum or gold or silver, blah, 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 blah. Well, sounds great. First problem with doing anything like that is that there are UN laws. You're not allowed to take advantage of space unless it's going to be for the benefit of everyone on the planet. So if you're a corporate entity and you want to go and start, uh, you think you've got a, a way or a means to do this profitably, not so fast. The UN doesn't want you to make a profit off of space. They want it to be for the good of me and everyone else on the planet. And even if you forget about UN law, there's a problem with US law as well. We don't have any laws that dictate ownership or the laws associated with owning a, ma a mine or an asteroid or a meteor or whatever. Uh, so you might run afoul of US laws. You might set up your mine and some other company comes along and decides to latch onto the other side. What are you going to do then? Have a corporate war? Well, maybe, but the point is we don't have laws in place yet to deal with these kinds of contingencies. And then there's another problem if you've decided to do this for profit. Well, as soon as you start bringing back massive platinum asteroids, you're going to have an abundance of platinum. If you, if you decide to go ahead and flood the market with all that platinum, what happens to the price? <laughs> Plummets. All of a sudden, that big asteroid that you had counted on to, to bring in a certain price gets undercut by your own greed and your own success. Prices plummet, and now all of a sudden, instead of getting a thousand something per ounce of platinum, you're getting two bucks an ounce. So that would really, really cause a problem for your bottom line. And I'm sure that your investors would not be happy to learn that you're not going to recoup all the costs. In fact, you're going to lose money. Oh, and by the way, that means you're going out of business. Now, one example of an asteroid that people have looked a lot at is the Eros asteroid. I think it's Eros 430 or 433 or something. I can't remember the number, but I believe it's a chondrite with a ton of precious metals on it. And of course, everybody starts drooling when they talk about that asteroid. Now, is it going to make sense to go and mine it for, for, for monetary benefit? No, I just explained why that could be potentially be a problem. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't do it because there are other reasons to go and mine asteroids. What other reasons am I talking about? Go mine an asteroid to make space construction easier. There's a host of raw materials already up there in space so that we wouldn't have to launch them. So if you create some sort of refining or production platform in space to take advantage of these cheap materials coming in from asteroids, you convert those cheap materials into materials for spacecraft construction, and suddenly we've got a production platform in space, which is far more cheaper than building it on Earth and then launching all this heavy, heavy garbage into space using up tons and tons, literally, of fuel. But again, since this is not for profit, we're going to have to find out a way to pay for it. Likely this will be a governmentally funded operation, maybe with some private industry involvement. But you can imagine that basically we'd be taxed a lot to pay for that kind of emission. But I don't mind those kinds of taxes. For these purposes, I think that would make a lot of sense. Then there's another idea that is really science fiction-y. In fact, I think there are books that have already used this idea, and that is turn an asteroid into a spaceship. Basically hollow it out. You've got lots of materials on there that you might need for some sort of interstellar, or inter, probably interstellar uh, within our galaxy. Interstellar long-term voyage. If it's a big enough asteroid, you can hollow out tunnels, living areas, all sorts of stuff. And again, you've made it cheaper, right? You're no longer constructing all the parts of a spacecraft. You're using the asteroid as the hull, and all you're doing is putting in engines and those sorts of things. And in addition to be having tons of space for living areas, you've got raw materials there. If you pick the right asteroid, you can have organics, you can have all sorts of stuff. Water, some asteroids contain water. Uh, you can imagine that these things would, would, would basically form the basis of a very, very nice spacecraft. And in addition, with a big enough asteroid, you'd have microgravity. Now, remember, we talked about in an earlier episode, pew, the problems with going to Mars and how zero gravity affects your, your, um, your bone structure and your muscle uh, strength. But if you've got a big enough asteroid and it has enough of a microgravity field, then maybe, maybe some of that would be mitigated. Now, I'm guessing there. I could be completely wrong. I'm not a physicist. And tell me in the comments if I've got that wrong. 
The other thing, the other nice thing about having an asteroid as a as a, a hull is that you can make your outside as thick as you want. Remember, we were talking earlier uh, again in that video about Mars, how there, you've got this danger of particles and rocks hitting your spacecraft. Well, if you've got a big honking asteroid, uh, you can see from the surface of many of these asteroids they're hit all the time, and the craters only go so deep. So you've got a nice bit of armor in the form of an asteroid if you decide to use that as your spacecraft. So, that, a lot of hand-waving there, a lot of science fiction-y stuff, but after all, I am a science fiction author. That's it for today. Go ahead again and pre-order my book, Tiger Burning, available July 2019 from Bain Books. Pre-order it now, though, and you'll get it as soon as it comes out, and you'll be doing me a big favor. Thanks again for watching, and transmission. Hey, TC McCarthy here, the most eclectic and entertained science fiction author on YouTube, maybe even the internet. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. As usual, buy my books. I've got a new one coming out in July, and uh, I'll have a giveaway coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Appreciate you subscribing to my channel, and please, 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 please don't forget to click that little bell icon so that whenever I upload new content, you get notified. Thanks again. See you soon.